Michelle, you might not know this, Mm -hmm. but Washington Irving's Legend of Sleepy Hollow is one of my absolute favorite stories of all time. Yeah, you literally never shut up about it. Fair enough. Oh, but you probably don't know that I finally finished that big Sleepy Hollow poster project I've been talking about for the last couple years. Yeah, I know that too. I work here. I thought you looked familiar. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm actually really excited about this project. Good. I want one. Well... Stick around to the end of the video. Like I got somewhere to go. I will tell everybody how they can get their hands on one of these. As usual, I want to talk about process. Mm -hmm. This piece was a digital illustration. I worked in Clip Studio Paint at the beginning. I did my sketches with a digital blue pencil, and then I inked over that with some of my favorite inking brushes. Okay. Once the inks were done, though, I pulled the piece into Affinity Photo because I wanted to work in CMYK. Ah. This thing, you know, it's going to be printed, and I don't like to mess around with color conversion. Right. After that, for the most part, I created this image the way I would any comic. Mm. You know, inks on one layer, flat colors on another, highlights and shadows on a third. So your basic process, but yeah. the structure of this image was maybe more complex than when you make comics. Oh, yeah. Because I'm telling a story either way. Mm -hmm. But this one isn't paced out with panels and dialogue and page turns. Right. It's more like a a book illustration, but it's all one giant flowing image. All right, look at this. Yeah. This is basically the, I hit my head hanging a clock (laughs) and then drew the flux capacitor moment of this poster's evolution. Yeah, I remember this was months ago. Yeah. You came into the workshop and sketched this on the whiteboard and walked me through it. I was just trying to work out the flow of the poster, get all the story beats down. Mm -hmm. So I scribbled it quickly while calling out all those different scenes. And now he's he's, he's got to teach at the schoolhouse. (laughs) And then, oh, he has to walk home in the dark. Yeah, and and it worked, even with the scribbles. And I took a picture so we wouldn't lose it. Yeah, and when I found this photo recently and I compared it to the final image, the poster hasn't fundamentally changed from this early scribbled rough I did months and months ago. Oh, yeah. And this, this, Marty, (laughs) is what makes time travel possible. (laughs) So I had some of these printed. Mm Mm-hmm. And I want to show you the entire image now, but I'm an illustrator. I tell stories with pictures. So I would like to reveal this as it was designed, as a story. Oh, good. Story time. Yeah, exactly. But this time it's special. I went all out. I contacted a friend who does voice work. I sent him a heavily edited version of Sleepy Hollow. Mm -hmm. And he was kind enough not only to read this for us, but he added some audio effects. And he just, he performed the whole story with class and professionalism. So not at all like you would have done it. I don't, I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> anyway, grab your hot cider, turn the lights down, and let's just, let's take a little journey. Ichabod Crane's journey through Sleepy Hollow. Inspired by the tale by Washington Irving. Illustrations by Vince Dorse. Deep in the Hudson Valley, along the banks of the Tappan Zee and just beyond the village of Tarrytown. There is a shadowy glen known to the residents there as Sleepy Hollow. And into this drowsy little hamlet one autumn day wandered an itinerant schoolmaster by the name of Ichabod Crane. Tall and exceedingly lank, Ichabod was well-read, cultured, and could hold forth on subjects both worldly and otherworldly. As Ichabod made himself at home in the hollow, he grew acquainted with its many inhabitants, such as Katrina Van Tassel, the town beauty, and her boisterous suitor, Abraham Van Brunt, known to the locals at the tavern as Brom Bones. Ichabod spent his mornings imparting wisdom and warnings to the town's school children, and whiled away his twilights, dreaming up ways to win the hand of the fair Katrina. But his nights, his nights were spent hurrying through the dark countryside, jumping at the sound of every tree, toad, and screech owl, and always looking over his shoulder for the town's resident spirit, the ghost 
of the Headless Horseman. But nothing could keep him home on All Hallows' Eve, the night of the Van Tassel's harvest celebration. Even superstitious Ichabod would brave a headless ghost for the warmth of community, the bounty of the fall feast, and a chance to dance with Katrina. And dance they did with great enthusiasm, much to the consternation of Brom Bones, who had grown weary of the gangly schoolmaster and suspicious of his intentions with his Katrina. And so Brom devised a plan. When the guests all gathered round the hearth at midnight for hot cider and ghost stories, Brahm spun a tale about the headless horseman so terrifying that you could hear Ichabod's knees knocking from across the room. This, of course, made Ichabod's ride home through the dark even more chilling, trembling from the October cold, as well as his dread over the long journey home through the shadowy woods. Ichabod was suddenly aware of another rider on the path. As he approached and passed the mysterious rider, he realized with a start that it was the headless horseman himself, rearing up on his black steed, holding his own head aloft, and cackling like a mad ghoul. Ichabod spurred his borrowed horse, Gunpowder, urging it to run faster, trying to escape the spirit. But the ghost gave chase. At every turn, Ichabod could hear the ghost's laughter and the heavy hooves of its horse thundering on the path just behind him. As the tree line broke and the moon illuminated his path, Ichabod remembered part of Brahm's tale, that if one could cross the bridge by the old Dutch church before the horseman laid his hands upon you, you might just live to see the morning. And so Ichabod yelled and flailed atop gunpowder, making haste for the bridge. But the horseman, perhaps knowing his intentions, hurled his disembodied head at Ichabod, cackling with terrifying delight. The next morning, after Ichabod's borrowed plow horse found its way back to its owner, the townsfolk went searching for the schoolmaster. But all they could find, at the far end of the bridge by the old Dutch church, were the pedagogue's hat and the remnants of a shattered jack-o'-lantern. And that is the tale of Ichabod Crane and his journey into, through, and finally out of Sleepy Hollow. Wow. Right? That was a lot of fun. It really was. Mm -hmm. That was Owen McEwen, as you know. Yeah. He's a voice actor. He's a narrator for commercials. I'll put all of his info down in the description box. He really did an amazing job. He really did. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking at here is a Jaclay print I had matted and framed. Mm -hmm. It's hanging on a wall where every Halloween, you and I can gather with our mulled cider and cinnamon sticks, Mm. and I will stand there and recount the legend of the Headless Horseman of Sleepy Hollow. Like Brom Bones? Yes, exactly, like Brom Bones. <laughs> and I'll be using the illustrations on the poster to help guide the story. And if you're a fan of the legend of Sleepy Hollow, and if you enjoy these illustrations, and if you, too, plan to pour yourself into some Brom Bones tights next Halloween... Wait. We have printed up a small run of posters. You didn't tell me you are going to be wearing tights. It's called Commitment to the Bit, Michelle. I'm going to HR. Hey, do what you got to (laughs) do. Anyway, a few of these posters have gone out already. Right. You've been signing them. Then we roll them, Mm -hmm. put them in sleeves. Yeah. And as of the airing of this video, there are more available in the shop. Mm -hmm. Just go to the link down in the info and it'll give you all the details you need. I'm so happy you finished this project. Yeah. I know this was something you really wanted to do. I really did. Mm -hmm. And we got it in just under the wire because... We're going to be taking a little break for the holidays. Yeah. So huge thanks to everyone who's been watching and subscribing. Hope everyone has a nice holiday, and we'll be back with more fun stuff real soon. We got to talk about the tights. It's not up for discussion. I'm wearing the tights. (sighs) Can you just not?